Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the DT evangelists here at Digital Tutors. In this video, we're going to look at a question from one of our users on how we can get a shadow to show up in an ambient occlusion render. So to illustrate this, I have a very simple scene set up here. And as we can see, basically I just have um, an HDR setup or an IBL setup uh, with a light in here that's giving us this shadow off the object. So now that we know what we're working with, uh, let's very quickly set up our ambient occlusion. So uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to use primarily render layers. I'm going to come into my render layer here. I'm just going to go ahead and right click and copy this. Um, actually, I'm going to need about three different render layers. So um, the first one here is going to be my occlusion render layer. So with that selected, if we come to layers, attributes, uh, we can use the occlusion preset and basically Maya will set up a surface shader with our ambient occlusion node and apply that as an override to the render layer. Alright, so this is how our ambient occlusion render looks. Now we can see we're getting some kind of soft shadows here at the bottom of our, our geometry. But if we take a look at what we had before, where we're getting the shadow from our light, uh, it looks very different than our ambient occlusion. We're not getting that shadow in our actual ambient occlusion render. So this is with the shadow and then uh, this is the ambient occlusion render layer. Now the reason for this is that occlusion is actually a geometry based uh, operation. It doesn't really take any of our lighting into account. But instead, it's based off the distance from one piece of geometry to another. So uh, we can see it's darker here where these uh, two pieces of geometry are touching. Uh, but it's not actually using the lights in our scene in order to cast shadows. So if we want to get the shadow, say from this render here, into our ambient occlusion render, we're going to have to actually composite that shadow in. Now there's a few different ways that we can achieve this, uh, but for the sake of this video, let's take a look at how we can do that by setting up a few simple render layers. So I have a couple other render layers here that basically I just copied from my master layer. So one of them we're going to need to use in order to uh, create or capture the actual shadow. So that will, let's name that our shadow render layer. Let's see if I can spell that right there. Shadow render layer. And in order to capture the shadow, I'm going to use a use background material. I'm going to hop over to my uh, hyper shade here and go to create materials and use my use background material. So I'll just go ahead and middle click and drag that onto my plane here. And we can see the result that we're getting. Um, if I were to hop over to the alpha channel, I actually noticed that we're not getting an alpha. <laughs> the reason for that is because if we open up our used background, by default, it's going to have reflectivity and things like that turned on. So I'm going to come in and turn all of this off as far as the specular color, the reflectivity, and the reflection limit. And we can see that now our render is giving us the alpha for our shadow. Uh, so this is actually the color layer. And then the alpha channel is giving us the uh, shadow here. Uh, but we also notice that we're still getting some uh, effects from the actual plane itself. Now, the reason for that is because we actually have a final gathering turn on in this particular scene. And final gathering, when we're using the used background material, usually isn't something we're going to want to use uh, because it'll give us this sort of effect. Um, so I'm going to come in and actually turn off final gathering just for this one render layer. So I hop over to my render settings, come into my indirect lighting tab. And if we scroll down to final gathering, we can right click on it and create a layer override. So when we create a layer override, basically what we can do is uh, turn off final gathering and it'll turn that off for the shadow render layer. So only on this one layer is final gathering going to be turned off. And we can see the result when we render now is that not only did our render take a lot, uh, lot less time to render out, but we're also getting a nice clean alpha for our shadow. Uh, but we're also getting it for the geometry as well. 
And since we're only really wanting the shadow for this last render layer here, I'm going to come in and call this my geometry mat because we're going to apply only our object to this render layer. So this will be my geometry mat render layer. And I'm going to select the object here, come into layers, attributes, open up the attributes for this render layer. And similar to what we did with the occlusion, under the presets, we'll find one for geometry map. Now, basically, what that's going to do is that's going to create a uh, layer override that is just the surface shader. So it's very quick to render out. Um, actually, I need to come in and make sure that I only have the torus knot applied to this. So I'm going to come into my outliner here, select everything else except for my torus knot, and go ahead and remove the selected objects from this render layer. Let's see if it'll let me do that. And it looks like it's not wanting to actually uh, remove these. So I'm going to come in, I'll make sure I have the shape selected can remove these. Yep, there we go. Uh, remove the IBL. Don't need that in this layer. I can also remove my light because I don't even need that in my layer or in this render layer. All we're looking for is to just get the alpha for this torus knot. And as we can see very quickly, we get this render uh, with the alpha for our torus knot. Okay, so uh, we're pretty much ready to render these out. So I'm going to come into my render settings here, give this a name. This will be, say, occlusion shadow. And then uh, uh, depending on what file format you may need, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use a Photoshop document. Um, that way it can organize all of these into layers within that Photoshop document. And we can just come in and batch render this out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and pause the video while this renders. Okay, so now our rendering is completed. Let's hop over to Photoshop. And I have this PSD that's rendered out. Let's drag that in here. We'll find our master layer, as well as the geometry matte layer. That's just our torus knot here with the alpha channel. Our shadow layer, as well as the occlusion layer. Okay, so the basic process here is I want to take this shadow layer and I want to subtract this layer from it. So I'll just hold down control and click on the layer thumbnail here in order to turn that into a selection. And now on the shadow render layer, I can just click this little icon here in order to create a layer mask. So um, in this case, actually what it's done is it's created the layer mask opposite where it's taken, gotten rid of my shadow. So I'm going to hit if uh, you have the layer mask selected and hit control I, that will invert your selection. And now we have just the shadow on our occlusion render. So we could easily come in and we can turn the opacity down if we want to. Uh, we can do whatever we want to do with the shadow on our occlusion render. So that's a quick look at how we can get a shadow to show up in our ambient occlusion render by utilizing a few different render layers and then compositing the image together. Now, if you want to take a more in-depth look at how ambient occlusion works, I'd recommend checking out the Introduction to Metal Ray in Maya course.